Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The whole prayer starts with our Heavenly Father. God is our Heavenly Father who loves us. God is not the Heavenly Persecutor that tricks us into some misbehavior only to punish us in the end. On the contrary, God has only good plans for us, as he says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Can we pray this prayer with the conviction of being loved and accepted by God? The NIV reads it as the evil one, as the personalized evil or the devil. To be honest, we are normally less afraid of the devil jumping around the next corner. And we are more afraid of the everyday's evil around us. Maybe we are afraid of violence on our way to work. Maybe we are afraid of mobbing and abuse in our working environment or even in our churches. We may be afraid of hard feelings and unforgiveness in our personal life. And finally, we may also be afraid of our own evil thoughts or own evil desire that could lead us into temptation. So, deliver us from the evil wants to speak directly in our everyday experience. Because there is evil all around us. And we pray that God will deliver us from all this. By the way, not protect us, but deliver us. Most important for me, this line in the prayer of the Lord is a fundamental admission that we ourselves are not the strong ones, not the invincible ones. We can fall into temptation. We can be confronted with evil that can break us. The prayer of the Lord ends with, For the kingdom, the power and the, glories, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This ending is an addition from the early church. For me personally, this is the most touching part of the prayer. I mean, I love the whole prayer, but this ending gives us such a view on God's reality. It, it's mind-blowing. I'm so glad it's there. And it grounds me every time I am praying this. God bless you.